No one is like you. Great are you, Lord.
said that you won't forsake me You're right beside me And that is all the mothers The sun was mine And the moon, yeah The flood will sweep The Lord, Lord is
you have sung, you want to express your thanksgiving to God. So lift up your voice and thank God. Exalt Jesus. Give him praise. Exalt him. Worship him. Can I feel people that are serving their God? You want to worship God. Thank him. Bless his holy name. The Lord said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefit. You want to say, Father, thank you for my life. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for divine health. I am grateful. Thank you for the opportunity to be alive again. You want to serve, you want to worship God. Pray, open your mouth and express your thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, give him praise. Give him glory. Exalt him in the mighty name of Jesus. This hour of prayer is called the covenant moment. You want to meet God. You want to exchange. You want to tell God there is something in me that I need you to touch. I want you to turn it around. So begin to thank him. Give him praise. Thank God for this morning. You slept. You woke up. You want to say, Father, I am grateful. I am thankful. Thank God for your parents. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your education. Thank God for your job. Thank God for your relationship. Thank God for your businesses. Exalt God. There is something to thank God for. If you don't know what to thank God for, thank God for the mattress you slept on and woke up this morning. Thank God. Exalt Him. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Give God quality worship. Give God quality worship. Give God quality praise. In the name of Jesus. Praise is an application for more. Lord, I am thankful. When you praise God, you are right. You are raised. When you praise Him, you are raised. Father, thank you for everything. Even thank you for my challenges. Thank God for your challenges. Thank God for your problems. For all things work together for our good. Exalt Him. Give Him glory. Thank you, Father, for everything that has been happening around us. In the name of Jesus, you want to even thank God for stand out. Thank God for this conference. Thank God for the impact it's making on us. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We thank you for day one. We even thank you for day two. The impact is happening. That is coming upon us. The life-changing moment. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the next level. You are taking us. Thank you for the new name you will give us in this standout conference. Thank you for the new status you are putting on us. We give you all the glory. We bless your holy name. Yesterday was a changing moment. Today it will be an impactful moment. Father, we thank you for an atmosphere of rain of knowledge and information. We give you praise. We exalt you. We magnify your name. In the name of Jesus, you want to continue to pray? You want to say, Father, forgive me for any sin that will be a blockade to my blessing tonight. Any besetting sin that would be a hindrance to my blessing. Father, mercy on me. Father, mercy on me. Open up your mouth. Confess every sin of your life. You want to do away with that besetting sin. That sin that you always don't want to find yourself in. But by the time you see you are in it, you want to say, God, mercy on me for the tongue of lies and deceit. Mercy on me for the habit of fornication. Forgive me and set me free. In the name of Jesus, lift up your hands. Surrender your life to him. In the name of Jesus, I want to see you lift up your hands and say, oh Lord, with my hands lifted up, I surrender everything of me to you. Forgive me for every sin of my life. Cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me, cleanse me, consecrate me, consecrate me in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, there be certain sin in me, that sin that I don't need, that you know it is not. Father, take it away from me. In the mighty name of Jesus, the sin of fornication, the sin of lies and deceit, the sin of theft, oh Lord, forgive us, take it of us, deliver us, oh Lord, for this is the year of freedom. Deliver us from every besetting sin, every known or unknown sin, any generational sin that is working against us. Oh Lord, by the blood of Jesus, erase it off our life. Erase it off our life. Erase it off our lives. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for mercy over our lives and our generation. You want to continue to pray now and say, Lord, by your mercy, let every spiritual gift in me come out. Let every gift in you have put in me come forth. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command the gift in me to come forth. In the name of Jesus, place your hand on your tummy and say, Oh Lord, let every gift in me come forth. Let every gift in me come forth. The nine gifts of the Spirit, let mine come forth. In the name of Jesus, the gift of faith come forth. The gift of healing come forth. The gift of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom come forth. Oh Lord, Lord, let every spiritual gift in in us pass out in the name of Jesus. That gift that will make us stand out. That gift that will make me stand out. That gift that will make us outstanding. Oh God, let that gift come out in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 11, 2 says, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on us. The spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You want to say, oh God, let every spiritual gift come forth in the name of Jesus. Let every gift in us, O oh Lord, burst out in the name of Jesus. The gift that will make us stand out in the world in the mighty name of Jesus. The gift that will make us problem solvers. The gift that will make us answers to people's questions in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and pray. Oh Lord, let that gift be bet in the name of Jesus. That spiritual gift, the gift of discernment, the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of the word of wisdom, the gift of the word of healing, the gift of faith, oh God. Continue to pray that the spirit of excellence will rest on us and our the, the Lord will give us career settlement. The spirit of excellence over the works of our hands. Career settlement. Anything you've chosen to do with your life and in your career, oh Lord, settle us. Give us knowledge. Give us the spirit of excellence. Let the spirit of the preferred grace rest on us. Anywhere we enter, we are the best. Anywhere we find ourselves, we will be preferred. In the name of Jesus, in our classrooms, we are the best. At our workplaces, we stand out. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, settle us in our careers. Settle us in our careers. Settle us in our destinies. Settle us, oh God. Rado Shatalabaha. Anything our hand finder to do will prosper. Rako Shatalaba. The Bible says we shall be like the tree planted by the rivers of waters. We will bring forth our fruit in due cities. Anything our hand finder to do, the spirit of excellence is for upon it. In the name of Jesus. Rado Shakadalabaha. Continue to pray that as you are growing. Those that are looking for marriages, oh Lord, give us, settle us well in our choice of marriages. Rado Shakadabaha. We will not marry the wrong man. We will not marry the wrong woman as we are choosing our partners as young men and young women, oh Lord. Give us the right marital settlement in the name of Jesus. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. He who finds a man that fears the Lord will find God. Oh Lord, give us the right partners of our lives in the name of Jesus. We will not choose the wrong couples. We will not choose the wrong partners. Oh Lord. Give us the right marital settlement in our lives. In the name of Jesus, bring the right men and women our way, O oh Lord. In the precious, mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory. Finally, lift up your hands. You want to pray? 
that the spirit of the love of the Lord will rest upon the church, especially the youth of Trinity Baptist Church and the entire kingdom of Christ, that the spirit of love and unity will rest upon the church. And above all, we are praying that, Lord, let the spirit of growth will multiply will depopulate hell and will populate heaven. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, let the spirit of love enter the church once more time. Let the spirit of unity enter the church one more time. In the mighty name of Jesus. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For it is like the head of Aaron that the oil of the Lord is poured on that runs down to the edge of his garment. Oh Lord, unite the church one more time. Let love prevail and let the church grow and grow and grow to your glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. He said, when you pray, believe that you have received it. We give God all the glory. Amen. Give the Lord a shout. Is that shout for Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes we don't have to say nice things for you to put your hands together for the Lord. Just the mere fact that you are in the presence of the Lord, you are in your father's house, Jesus Christ, through whom we have freedom. You want to put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. You can do it better. You can do it better. Oh, hallelujah. Are you happy and excited to be in the house of the Lord? Are you happy and excited to be in the house of the Lord? Then make some noise unto the Lord. Whoo! Amen. We thank God for this evening and I want to seize this occasion to say a big welcome to all of us gathered in our Father's house. You know there's a difference between an invitation to the president's house and an invitation to God's house. Hello. Are we together on this? You know when you are invited to the president, it's, it's a VIP, VVIP invitation. Do you agree with me? But this is our Father's, our father's house. Uh, I want to hear you say that. Uh -huh. So it is V, 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 V. Hello. But you know, the difference is that in the president's house, you are so careful the way you even walk, the way you even sit, you want to be so gentle and all of that. But we have a God who is more than the president. V, V, I, P, invitation. But you have the freedom to, in court, misbehave. Please put your hands together for Jesus. And if you, if you join me, I want you to be on your feet and make a noise unto the Lord. In the house of the Lord, there is liberty and there is freedom. Enjoy that freedom whilst it lasts. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we are declaring that it is the second day of Impact 2024. Hallelujah. Yesterday was great. Today is going to be powerful and tomorrow will be wonderful. Amen. And before I leave the mic, I want you to know that this program is being organized by Impact Ministry. And Impact is a vibrant ministry that is dedicated for or to bring in young people to align themselves with the purpose of God so that the call of God upon their lives can be fulfilled. And if you are that person who is determined to do the will of God and become so distinct in life, then you are at the right place. Say, I am at the right place. And look into somebody's face and tell the person you are at the right place. And you are doing the right thing with the right people, with the right motive for the right results. In Jesus' name. I said last time that life is a journey. Hello? Life is a journey. And on this journey, people fall off. The spirit behind the conference or the purpose of the conference is that in this journey, when people are falling off, when students are giving up, when husbands are giving up, when business people are giving up, you will not give up. You will be able to stand. Say, I will stand. And when people are standing, you will stand tall. Say, I will stand tall. And when people are standing tall, you will stand out. Say, I will stand out. And here is Stand Out Conference 2024. Put your hands together for Jesus. We want to recognize the presence of very great men of God in our midst. Pastor Carter is in our midst. Pastor Romeo is in our midst. Pastor Simon is in our midst. And you are also in our midst. Put your hands together for yourselves. Oh, hallelujah. 
On this note, we want to welcome you all. Enjoy the service and make sure that you don't live here the same. Your life will be transformed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. Is that clap for Jesus? Good evening, church. Welcome to Standout Conference here at Trinity Baptist Church, an oasis of restoration. We are a church that is committed to the Great Commission, transforming lives and fulfilling destinies. Standout Conference continues tomorrow, right in this auditorium. Tell someone, invite a friend, invite a sister, invite a loved one. And you can't afford to miss this. So I want to see all of us here with someone. Are you bringing anyone tomorrow? Are you? Hmm. Yeah, you look suspicious. Okay. So the Kingsley APJ Foundation continues to seek partners to support needy but brilliant students. For this reason, the foundation will continue to have its maiden breakfast meeting on 27th April. Um, yes, for the partners. This is to deliberate on how best to support and... Sorry, this is to deliberate on how best to support the foundation and bring about the much needed transformation. Kindly see the church receptionist to fill out a form to be a partner. Church, are you ready? Are you ready? So the maiden Moses Bliss life at CBC comes off on 21st April. Are you ready? Are you ready to praise the Lord? So yes, so our maiden Moses Bliss it's live here at this auditorium on 21st April at both services, so both first and second services. And it's going to be a dress down, so feel free, come in your sneakers, in your jeans, because you are going to praise and worship the Lord. So you can't afford to miss this experience. Please, I want to see all of us, everybody. Bring your colleagues, bring your friends. Everyone should be here. And come with a friend to us well. Kindly like, share, uh, or follow the church, okay, on Facebook, on TBC Ghana, on Instagram, TBC Ghana, and, and on Twitter, TBC underscore X. On this note, can we all bring out our phones, everybody? If you have a phone here, please bring it out. Turn on your data. We are going to follow impacts right now in this, like, very, very minutes. You are going to like all our posts. So please go on Instagram and follow Impact Africa. Has anyone found us on Instagram right now? Give me a wave if you have. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. I can't see us on our phone. Oh, we didn't bring our phones. <laughs> please, have you found Impact Africa? Please follow us and like all our social media posts. With heavy hearts, we announce the call to glory of our beloved sister, Sandra Mensa Hodi, a dedicated member of the media team. She passed away at the Ga East Municipal Hospital at Kwabinya on 29th of March 2024 after a short illness. Her one-week observation will take place in this auditorium this coming Sunday on 13th April from 9 a.m. to 12, yes, Saturday. On Saturday, now from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., all are cordially invited to come and support the bereaved family with your presence and prayers. May her soul rest in peace. The dress code is white and black. Let's all come and support and give our sister the last respect. Thank you and enjoy the service. Hallelujah. Shall we please all be on our feet as we take our conference song? So in view of our annual theme for the year, Freedom Through Christ, we'd like to sing together a, call, a song called um, Free Indeed.
things are holding me It's who I chose to be I'm free indeed In Christ I'm free indeed Your chains are holding me It's who I chose to be I'm free indeed In Christ No chains are holding me It's who I chose to be Sing one more time I'm free indeed In Christ No chains are holding me it's soon. Now let the church sing. I'm free indeed. In Christ, no chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Ooh, I'm free indeed. In Christ, no chains. Say I choose to be free. Excited to today we're we're having a discussion on building corporate poise and personal branding. And I have the singular honor to give the opening speech for just 10 minutes, and then we'll have our panel here. Amen. Yes. Are we excited? Yes. Hallelujah. So one good thing is that we're Christians, first of all, and glory to God, we're Christians. And wherever we find ourselves, it's very important that we carry that crown with all grace and happiness, with all grace and boldness, with all grace, reminding ourselves that 
we are indeed the salt of the world. Amen? Okay, so I did a few research and I would like to share with us. What is poise? Poise means being graceful, elegant, and having that bearing as a person. So wherever you find yourself, or by the time you're walking into a certain place, they would have been able to see that you carry a certain poise, a certain identity in yourself. Amen. So professional presence is very vital. It's in fact, a very vital component if we're looking at developing yourself career-wise, okay? And some of the things you need to look out for in developing your corporate poise or your personal brand is first of all, understanding your professional presence. You would need to come to that realization and know where you stand. Make an assessment of yourself and find out if, um, how do people approach you? Because of course, I'm sure we've heard this quote, the way you dress is the way you'd be addressed. So do a retrospective analysis of yourself and see how people approach you, how people react when they meet you and all that. That would first of all give you an analysis of um, the kind of presence you carry, amen. So in that, you'll be able to understand your ability to command a certain respect, inspire a certain confidence, exude leadership confidence, being diligent with your work, communication skills, being authentic in your personal style, amen. Are we enjoying what I'm saying or it's a lot of English language? Great. Personal branding involves consciously shaping and promoting your personal image and reputation. Personal branding involves consciously shaping and promoting a professional image and reputation. So after you've done an assessment, you would have to now look at how consciously you would want to shape your appearance and how you want to promote it, okay? So you want to identify who you are, what you stand for, and then how different you are from others within your corporate field. So some of us are in school now. Um, I remembered when I was in UPSA, um, a lot of my mates wouldn't make time to come for um, e extracurricular activities like programs and the likes. And I can say for a fact, and I'll give that as an advice to those of us who are still in school. It's not only going to school to go and make the grades. That would make you a great person in the future. You need to make time for other things that will build you up for the tough world. Amen. So I went to one of these programs and I heard about LinkedIn. Say LinkedIn. How many of us have heard of LinkedIn? Great. And, and the good thing too about LinkedIn is that it's, it's where you find a lot of um, corporate organizations, corporate people, like-minded people. It's, it's a lot of, you know, serious work over there. No plenty play and all that. So I encourage you. I put myself out there and I started following the right people. Say the right people. How would you know the right people? You remember I made mention of who you are, what you stand for, and how different you want to be from people within your field. So you want to assess yourself. First of all, you are a child of God. You are the salt of the world. You were created in the image and the likeness of God. So in all that you are going to, you know, present as a corporate uh, presence, you want to imbibe those values in that image that you are creating. Amen. So I, I, I decided I'll follow people who are of like-mindedness, people who post things in the area that I'm interested in. And that is how I built my corporate image. That is just online. Physically, what did I do? I made conscious efforts to see how my appearance would be, how consistent I can be in my work. And I encourage you, you may never know who is watching you, but if you want to really excel as a corporate person, as a professional person, be it a footballer, whatever field you want to find yourself in, you have to be conscious of how you want to be approached. Amen. Developing your professional presence also involves projecting a gravitas. Say gravitas. It's, it's more like an aura of dignity, seriousness, and credibility. When people see you, they should know that this person, when we give her the chance, she will deliver. So you are not looking shabbish. You are not just all over the place. 
you are serious and you know what you're about. You are diligent in your work. And when you are called to do your work, if you cannot do it, you are, you are truthful to the fact that I cannot do it. Please hand it over to this. Or, oh, I'll go and learn about it. Right now, we have social media. We have the internet. YouTube is there. There are so many good things that we can learn to build and make ourselves ready for the corporate world. And in fact, and, and, and in fact sorry, enhance ourselves and make ourselves more visible for greater opportunities. Amen. Build authentic and be authentic and consistent. I think I've mentioned consistency already. Authenticity is more like choosing a certain position and being with it. And not being swayed by, you know, all the trends and everything that comes around with it. You should seek feedback and then adapt. So you, you want to have mentors, people that are in your field that you want to build mentorship from. Seek mentorship, seek feedback from them. Have colleagues, people who are your, your colleagues, seek feedback from them. And of course, one other thing that will keep you on your toes is to have people who are younger than you that you want to be talking to. It also keeps you on your toes and it helps you prepare and project a very great corporate um, image. Amen. The last but not the least is a scripture I want to leave with us. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and all the people. So Jesus being God, he, he had to grow at a certain point in his life. That is the message I want to leave with us in this meeting today. That he grew in wisdom and in stature. That stature could also mean that in a certain presence... Okay, so while he was building himself, being in the synagogue, asking questions, and, and even though he is God, he wanted to leave a certain mark for us to follow. I encourage you today that you make the conscious effort to build wisdom and stature in your corporate space. And as we are in school, while we are in school, prepare yourself for the workplace. Amen. So that is all I would want to share in my 10, my 10 minutes time. I hope that I've been... Uh, my, 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 my story has been a blessing to you and it's going to help you in your corporate space or in your professional life. Amen. Let's give it up to Jesus. Oh, please do it better for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Want to just be on your feet and tell someone, I won't go back. I, are you enjoying the freedom? Then tell someone, I won't go back. I don't want to go back. I will never go back. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen.
I thought you were going to do it better. All right. Good evening to us all. You don't sound like you guys are happy to be here. Am I alone in being happy to be here? Are you guys excited to be here? Yeah. Okay, then do it better on the floor. Come on, do it better. Okay. So this is Standout Conference 2024, day two. Yesterday was very awesome. We had a segment called, What Are You Saying? Where we had the boys, the men, our grandfathers, our fathers, and our uncles separated. Onto the women, the ladies, the girls, our mothers, and our sisters. And it was a whole awesome moment and a beautiful experience. But today we are taking it a notch higher where well, we are going to delve into certain aspects of our lives. Because we do believe that... <laughs> we do believe that it's only about spirituality, but it's about the totality of our lives as Christians. And so today, we are going to delve more into our career prospects. And our theme for the evening is maintaining corporate poise, personal branding. And to help us in that... Our first resource person is a man with over 20 years of experience and exposure in people development. In fact, he says it is the breath that he breathes. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and Philosophy from the of Bonn and a Master of Business Administration in Human Resource Management from the Central University of Ghana. He's a certified project management professional and is a senior professional in human resource international certification. He's a co-founder of Logos Business School, one of Ghana's leading professional development and business consulting platforms, which began way back in 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly help me do the honor and welcome Mr. Raymond. first resource person. Our second resource person <laughs> Wow, it's getting tense, right? So our second resource person is a medical professional, a mental health professional. So for those of you who have at a certain point in time thought you had certain doubts about certain things concerning your mental health, <laughs> okay, so he works at the University of Ghana and his scope of work covers depression, anxiety disorders, stress, and stress-related mental health issues. He has post- and peripartum psychosis in women. If I'm not being too ambitious, I'll say women are his specialty. <laughs> he also deals in mental health conditions that centers around children and the agent. Ladies and kindly help me welcome Mr. G Paul. All right, okay. So now, I've just been, my attention has just been drawn here. So the other two resource persons, I'm going to call them after lunch. Then we'll give them the opportunity to introduce themselves to us. So we can have the opportunity to ask them the questions that we, we want to ask. I hope that's fine. Okay, so kindly help me do this. Let's welcome Madam Rene Rachidanka. Right. And last but least, our last resource person is also who takes delight in building people. I've come to know him 
as the brains behind the media team. He makes everything also. And I the way he carries himself. For me, I take a thing or two from him. You tonight. But hopefully, you can also be like me and pick a thing or two from him. So kindly help me welcome Minister Yarenchi. So now we are going to get to the meat of the program, yeah? Let's start with Madame Renee. I like to put people on the spot. It makes me happy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, good, good evening, everyone. My name is Irene Bachidankwa, but my friends call me Oba Renee. So Renee is fine. That's why you heard him call me Renee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so uh, about myself, briefly. So, well, I... I'm a media practitioner, like I, 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 I practice PR and communications. Um, so I currently work with Goyal PLC as corporate affairs officer. And um, I take delight in literacy. So um, about six years ago, I founded a literacy foundation that's called Reader's Bay. Some of you have heard about it. So Reader's Bay, basically we support underprivileged children to be literate all over the country. So um, this is the little we do to, to help our country. So um, I, I like, I'm very witty and, and funny and jovial. So when, when we are talking, I, I want us to like, take it easy. Do you understand? You're in of a call. Let's take it easy. So um, thank you very much for your audience. Thank you. All right. Okay. So we are done. Now we most often do people talking about personal branding. Actually our influences, social media influences, TikTok, so about the a certain product they are doing. You defined personal brand. I'll start with Mr. Raymondelli. Thank you. If time will permit me, I would want two friends who are here to kindly step forward. We want to define personal branding. Yeah, just right. two individuals who know each other to please step forward. Just very brief, with your kind permission. All right, that, that's that's anyone amongst you, two friends who know each other. <laughs> hey, sir, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wonderful. I need two people, two volunteers to please come along. Just anybody from the audience. One more person. <laughs> Wonderful. We want to define personal branding, and we are going to have these two friends. I know them personally, Brother Francis, Senior, and Peter. This is what we are going to do. So one kindly pair them with them. One, you come this way with. We are, we are going to ask a simple question. You know each other, right? I want you to tell her what you know about him, who he is in your perception. To I mean, who Mr. Peter Telfer is. Pay what you know of him. Tell her. Let him not hear. And you two, tell her what your perception about Brother Francis. Briefly. At this point, we should all be ready. It could be you next. Yeah. We are defining personal branding. That's all. Good. Okay. Thank you. So that's the first question. The second question is to answer the simple question, who do people say you are? Okay. First off, they have answered that question. The second question is, who do you say you are? In fact, that should have been the first question. So what you're going to tell them, your partners now, first, you have told her what you know about Mr. Francis Day and vice versa. Now you're going to tell her who 
you say you are. Your own perception of yourself. Is that okay? <laughs> Please, let's do that. 30 seconds. Let's keep it there. Okay, thank you. So this is a, a simple exercise in an attempt to define what personal branding is. It's about perceptions. The journey between what you know about yourself per who you are in your own consideration and what other people also perceive of you. That is your personal branding. Now, it's either you do it deliberately, you build it deliberately, or you build it by default. Because whether you like it or not, you have a brand. So in a nutshell, what they have just done will give us a snippet of who they say they are and what they say about each other, defining their brand as individuals. So tell us what Uncle Peter says about himself briefly and what he says about Brother Francis. And then you will also do that for us. So um, Uncle Peter, about himself first. Uncle Peter is a very modest person and a straightforward, uh, straight talker. Like he will go straight to the point. He doesn't bend the bush. That's, he's also straight talk, talk, a uh, straight talker. He's modest in his talking and he's a deep thinker. So when you talk to him, he would want to process it before he speaks. We have heard who Uncle Peter says he is and what he sees in Brother Francis. Can you tell us what he also told you? Good. And Uncle Peter, he said Uncle Peter is disciplined and he, he loved the things of God. That is what he said. He's a deep thinker and disciplined. So, I, mean, I know Uncle Peter. I know Brother Francis very well. They are pretty spot on. That is who they are. Now, the question is, if we had heard anything that does not align with the individual standing here, this conclusion would have been they don't know what they are projecting to the world. The consistency in deliberately carving or carving an image for yourself and letting the world know who you are. That deliberateness is, when, is what comes together to form your personal brand. But whether you like it or not, you have a brand you might as well be deliberate about building it. Thank you. Let's give a clap offering to them. Okay. That was a beautiful demonstration, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. So now to my next three panelists. In the next three minutes, one minute each, we want you to tell us, and please pay rapt attention, because after this question, I'm going to keep mute for the rest of the session. So we give you the opportunity about things that are bothering you concerning personal branding and maintaining corporate poise, especially the young ones who are doing internship, national service, and all that. So please. So back to the next minute, minute for each. What has personal branding done to your career as a person? From where you started to where you are now. How impactful your personal being to your journey? I'll start with Minister Enchi. All right, thank you very much. Um, before I say anything, I think I didn't introduce myself, so I'll just do that quickly. So I'm Yao Kran Um I'm self-employed. Before then, I worked in financial services. I've 
worked in financial services since 2002. Roughly, yeah, okay. So, and apart from that, I do media work as well. So, I have a side a business on media and also general consulting. So, that's, that's it briefly with me. Um, let me say this, that I maybe talk about branding. I, I'm somebody who wants to be very practical. If you talk about the issues we are talking about today, the topic, um, what do you call it? Uh, maintaining corporate poise. When I was told the topic, my heart skipped because the English was too big for me. The corporate boy, voice. But what it is is that um, what I may tell you may not be in the books. Or it may be in the book differently. It may work for you or not work for you. Okay? Uh, if you see it differently, please don't say I give you apple fee because this is my own stuff. And that is what I am. Every work that I do, I try that at least I would have practiced for over 12 years before I can call myself an expert. Other than that, I don't, I don't try. So how my branding has helped me is this. Um, starting off as a young boy, I was very, very shy. I was a big stammerer. I was everything. And somewhere along the line, when we came to know Christ, I said, um, my brand in life, I didn't intentionally say that my brand in life. But then I said, I'm going to be a lion and a lamb. So that is me. So in certain situations, I come like a lion. No negotiation works. Certain situations too, I come like a lamb. Sometimes I even feign um, like I'm a fool, so that we can get the work done. So both, I believe that has worked for me. So in my career and also in my own business, um, I remember there are times when before some people would bring some reports to me, they would have done their work well. Because then otherwise, then the lion will show. Before I ask one, two, three questions. So after some time, I realized that the quality of work that people bring me has shot up. And what does a lion do? I'll put you in a place, but then again, I'll teach you. So over time, of about three, four, five years, I didn't have to work so hard because the quality of work that came to me. That is what I'll say briefly. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So um, I'd like to start my submission from um, Matthew 25, okay? You know, it talks about the parable of the um, three talents where um, the master was traveling and those three guys were given five, two, one, yes. So master went away expecting that by the time he returns, they would have multiplied or increased on whatever he gave them. Upon his return... The guy who received the five talents gave a good report. He multiplied. The guy who received the two, two um, also multiplied. Then the other guy who received one started giving excuses. I know you're a wicked. I know you're a wicked master. And what if I don't improve on it? And then, 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 then. So this is it. The one you give me, I have it here. Take it. We all, I mean, we know the full story. I would like to end here. I'm trying to say that every human being, whether you are Christian or not, you have a talent placed in you by God. We know that we hear of many renowned, successful men like Bill Gates, like, um, I mean, when we come down to Ghana, we have Papa Kwesun Doom. We know that he's, a, he's like a successful businessman. What am I trying to say? You have no excuse to say that you didn't identify your talent and now you did not or you couldn't, I mean, figure out your career path. You have no excuse. On that note, I want to talk about my, my, myself. So personally, I decided to be a communications person, personally, while I was growing up. So I, I found myself watching TV, listening to a lot of radio shows and reading a lot of newspapers. I could, I'll be eating and I'll be reading. My mom would say, stop, stop reading and eat, that kind of thing. So sometimes you may not be able to figure out from the, um, from the initial stage when you were a kid. 
other times to uh, some, some way, somehow, you know that this is what I want to, 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 to be. Be it either ways. Make sure that you identify your career path. How do you do this? As Christians, we, we believe in God and so we will trust God to lead us on the right path. When you identify that path, stick to it. There are lots of distractions all over. But I tell you, I am a testimony. Stick to it. I, I worked as, when I started, I worked as a newspaper reporter, even before I went to journalism school. Okay. I went to KNUST. It didn't work out for me. I backed out. I came back to Accra and I went to journalism school. When I finished, I specialized in strategic communications. And then I went on to do my master's in corporate and commercial law and then corporate governance and strategic leadership. I'm a media practitioner, but I decided to develop myself. Okay, so you don't stick at one place. Now, consistency is very important. When you figure out what you want to do, stay consistent. And consistency comes with a lot of patience. If you are not patient, you will think that, oh, you are lacking behind. When I started work, I started work with a certain newspaper that's no more in existence. It was called The Observer. Okay, The Observer. Some of you must have, must have heard about it. I was reporting for it without any pay, without any salary. See, when I cast my mind back, like, 15 years ago, I, I don't believe, I can't believe that like I am here. I work with an oil and gas company and I'm a corporate affairs officer. It's no joke. Consistency is very important. Consistency and patience. If we leave this conference and you forget about anything at all, please remember consistency and patience patience okay so once you figure out all these i tell you there are lots of blocks on the way sometimes you feel that you are not moving forward sometimes you feel that oh so with the patience aspect you must be prepared to learn and learn and learn i was i was a very now i'm a senior staff i'm a senior officer i i i i i, I, I used to think that oh, when am i going to grow in my career path but I tell you, consistency has brought me this far. When you figure out what you want to do, when you figure out your career path, you may be an entrepreneur, you may be like, you know, um, like, um, like, like I, you're hired in, 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 a, in a company. Stay consistent. Don't look at the money. When we say that, don't think that money is not important. Money is not important. When you start from the scratch, don't make money your focus. And yes, sir, you, 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 you can't reach anywhere. You can't reach anywhere. I didn't look at money as, as my focus. I looked at how I could develop myself. I was learning from the, my seniors. I was learning from my colleagues. I was even learning from my subordinates. You need to be humble. If you're not humble, you, you, you can't even be patient enough to think of being consistent. So please, this is what I'll leave with you. Just identify what you want to do. Stay consistent with it. And I tell you, you're going to blossom like the flower. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Japon, I'd like you to take this question. Largely, impact is made up of a lot of students. We have Idol College. We have in the SHS, we have people in the university, UPSA, Central University, and the likes. Now, <clears throat> sorry, as a doctor, there's a certain perception that has been carved about people like you. Say you're a bookworm. How exactly did you balance academic life, social life, and your Christian life? If you can share with us a few points to take. All right, thank you very much. And, um Thank you for the opportunity given me today to sit before this great congregation. First of all, I am not a medical doctor. I am a health worker who has specialized in mental health. So you can rightly call me a mental health practitioner. That's what I do. All right. So like we were all saying before, before I come to your question, I mean, we're on the topic of brand. Now, I'd like to say something brief about all this. You know, when you mention brand from my profession and where I come from, <clears throat> it first of all begins from who you are and the personality you carry. First of all, to build a brand, you have to know the kind of personality 
you are. Personally, I think um, I am going and I have come this far because I understand my personality and because a lot of us are young people, I would want you to understand that don't give yourself the opportunity to get rusty. What I'm trying to say is at any point in time in your life, make sure you are in the now. In medicine, there's this concept in anatomy referred to as atrophy. When a particular thing or a part of the body is not being used, it dies off. So whatever profession you are in, whatever you are studying, understand who you are and make sure you are always in the now. If you're a lawyer, a medical doctor, whoever you are, and your patient calls you, your client calls you, and asks of any advice, be it legal advice, medical advice, don't give them the opportunity to say you don't know what you are doing or because you are not in the now, because that is your brand. So I give you an example. Don't tell them, wait, I'll get to the office and get back to you. You should be able to provide an answer in the now. So I have not given myself the opportunity to, to rust out. So I think that is how you build a brand. Whatever you are doing, make sure you are in the now. And then back to um, the question you asked, that's how I manage my social life and my educational life. Well, it's all borders on planning, you know. As a human being, you must make sure that um, you understand the fact that the human life is made up of compartments. You have a social life, you are a social being. If you are going to school, you must know you have something on the table. Academically, you must be engaged. At the same time, for me, I have an economic life as well, and I must make sure I'm paying attention, and my mental health. So at all times, I make sure I'm paying attention to all. But it's a matter of priority. At any point in time, I ask myself, which of these aspects of life, I mean of life, is the most important thing? That requires my attention. So if I'm a student, as, as I speak to you now, I'm a student as well. I'm studying law. And I give you an example, if school, re if school reopens and I'm in school, and um, the question of my social life comes into play, I have to make sure I understand at this moment I'm in school. And then also, if I'm called upon to come to church to do anything, that is not the time for me to tell anybody I have to go and study. This is my social life. I have to also make sure I give it attention. So it's all borders on priority setting. At any point in time, what are you doing? You must leave all these aspects of life, but prioritize as and when each one is needed. In that regard, nobody's going to call you a bookworm. They will find you learning when you're supposed to be learning. They will find you in church when you're supposed to be in church. They will find you doing business when you're supposed to do business. And I think that's how I've managed my life so far. All right, my microphone is back. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to ask questions that have been bothering you. So if you have something on your mind that you want to ask them, they are experts, gurus. They are all experts at what they do. So if there's any question that you want to ask them, you can kindly show by hand. I'll bring you the microphone so you can ask them. But whilst we wait for that, let's say I am a corporate person. I like to keep a certain brand. I'm very big on personal branding. But then say in church, I join a particular group and the group wants us to dress in a certain way. Let me put my people on the spot. Let's say it's of the core. But I like to go corporate. I like to be in my three-piece suit, with my neatly polished shoes and all that. But my group wants me to dress funky because we are youth. We represent what we are preaching out to the people. How do I situate myself to fit into the two? Maintaining my personal brand and also being able to coexist in the fraternity that I find myself in. Mr. Eli. Thank you. I think that situation should not arise if you know 
from the get-go what you are signing up for. Uh, one, within the corporate space, your brand is informed by the corporate brand, the values that govern the corporate entity, that inform the culture or the practices of the corporate entity. So if you work in a bank, there's a dress code that goes with that setup. If you work in a restaurant, there's a dress code. So professions, some way, somehow, affect what you define as your personal brand. In fact, before I even come to the question, in terms of looking at the topic we are dealing with, uh, corporate poise and personal branding, it should actually be the other way, given the context in which we are looking at it. We should be looking at personal branding and career readiness, so as to position yourself per projecting an image that makes you ready for a particular career choice or profession. If you're here, you are studying to be a banker. The values that you expect to inform the life of a banker should inform your personal brand. So that before even applying to a bank that I want to work with you, a lot of corporate entities now do a lot of background checks. People have lost golden opportunities because corporate entities go on their social media handles just to check their lifestyle and then inform them as to whether to employ them or not to employ them. If they go find that you conduct yourself in certain ways that challenge the value of the entity, they would never give you a call and an opportunity. So as the majority of us here who are young, you're looking at really preparing for a career. So that before I finish school, if I'm learning to be a lawyer, what informs the lifestyle? What are the values I should aspire to? So that when I finish the law school, I shouldn't have a crisis where I'm, I'll begin to wonder who am I? Am I fit for purpose as a lawyer or not? So define your brand based on the values that you aspire to and which align or should align with the career choice that you have. Now from that point, as you have asked, you are a banker within the corporate setup. A dress code is defined. There are certain days that even bankers dress down. Even what the bankers call dress down, dressing down, is defined. Not just any dressing down. Smart cash or somebody will say. So there are even dressing down within the career of, I mean, the space of a banker is defined. It's not just left in the open. Now, when you come to the church, you must know that in the office, you have people of different faith. But when they are presenting at the corporate environment, the corporate environment informs how they come into the, to the office. Now, when they go, when a Muslim is going to the mosque, the corporate environment does not define how he or she appears there. The faith informs that. Just as we as Christians are, when we come to church, our faith informs what we look like. Now, the interest of your corporate entity in what you look like, even in your social space, is one. Every corporate entity is looking for corporate ambassadors. So that even in your personal time and space, you should project a good image of the company that you work for. So because you work for, Auntie Reni works for Goyle, Goyle has, once she has mentioned here that she works for Goyle, if she misconducts herself here, sorry to use you as a, Goyle will have a stake. They say. That's why in some corporate entities, there is a rule that states that if you are not assigned an official responsibility to speak for or represent the brand, don't even associate yourself with the brand. I have a, a, a facilitator I work with. Back in the days when you put him on a program, he would never mention the company he works for. 
And he will tell you expressly, please don't mention to anybody. Because it's an express position of the entity. Because whatever you do smears off the entity. If it's bad, it's negative. And it affects the brand. If it's good, it's their benefit. But in order not to have any challenges, just don't say you work for me. So that whatever you do is your personal private space. It's smears off you, not the corporate entity. So there are defined things we need to do. So this gentleman who comes to church and has elected to join the choir should be in a position to go by the choir's dictate. So long as the choice of clothing that the choir has selected does not affect the fit negatively because the church, whatever we do here, is an expression of our faith as a people of God. So if they select the clothing as our choir is in this evening, the question is, does it project the faith positively? If the answer is yes, he shouldn't have a problem. The moment he has a problem, then he has to step back. That's why you don't just get up and join associations. You need to first and foremost be sure what you're signing up for. Does it align with all your priority centers? If it doesn't, don't join in the first place so that you don't have the challenge of having to ask whether to go or not to go. Be sure before you join. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Minister Yao, your take on that. Thank you very much. I will just add a bit to what he said. Um, I, as I said, I, I normally have my own controversial views about stuff. Normally, I think that when people talk about personal branding, we limit it to how people dress and how people appear. That is important. But whatever is on the outside starts from the inside. Okay? And so, I would address us as Christians. What the Bible says about us is that we have the mind of Christ, which is 1 Corinthians 2, I think 16. And then Luke chapter 6 um, somewhere 42 come in, 42, 43. It talks about the fact that a good tree would bear forth what? A good fruit, isn't it? And a bad tree. So, for me, personal branding should begin from inside. Okay? You do a lot of introspection, see what is desirable and what is not. And obviously, you're going to gravitate towards the one that's, that's, a, that, that's desirable. Even your organization, um, for example, if, if, if we do um, a job adv advertisement or we advertise for a position, we can see there's certain attributes that are listed. And when we apply, we try to make people know that we have them. It was about a month ago, so I had a chance to interview a young man. The skills, I told him I'm a very practical person. So if you say you know Excel, I'll push the PC in front of you and say, do these functions. That's, for me, that's it. I don't... I don't ask you what is your strength, what is your weakness. I look at the thing you have. Wait, what is your skill? I'll push the PC before you do it. Bah, bah, bah. By the time we're like 10 minutes into the interview, now the guy says, I'm ready to learn. Do you know what that means? It means the things on the CV he didn't know. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so I said, that's, that's fine. I'm also ready to teach. <laughs> and that is how we did it. So this is what I want to say. The outward expression is important because man looks at the outside. I'm not discrediting it. But the more important one is what you have identified from within. And if we're a Christian, the Bible says that you have the mind of Christ. And then you are, um, what do you call it? A good tree. I presume that you are a good tree and you bear good fruit. I believe that um, my co panelists have, have, have shown you how to get there. Consistency, I've heard consistency. I've had prioritization, okay? And I will talk about small steps every day. Small incremental steps every day. And then also feeding back. Finding out the same way um, Uncle Raymond did here and make people um, talk about each other and all that. You must be bold enough to take those comments about you. I remember, you know, I just said, my, the first thing I said was that I decided in life to go, my, my internal constitution is that I'm a lion and, I, and I'm a lamb. 
There were times in a meeting, I remember one time, something happened and I spoke. And for me, that is one thing. I'm, I, I, I've prayed for it. Courage. I've prayed for it. So me, I'm not afraid of. So I spoke, but it didn't land well. So my other management members said, yeah, please apologize to the MD. And I did. That is a lump side, right? That is a lump side. But over time, when we go for meetings, there's a guy, I'll, I'll call him Charlie, and a meeting may behave here. He says, oh, and he's, he's, <laughs> he's candid enough with me to say, yes, da, 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 da. You understand what I mean? Because I see myself as I'm in there to solve a problem. I move to the next one, which is within your, as you are preparing to enter the corporate space or your wealth or even your own business. And honestly, I find it even more challenging in my own business than working for somebody because what I am not able to do in the corporate space, in a, in a, in a, in a work environment, somebody else can step in and do. In my own business, if I can't do it, it's dead. So, <laughs> you understand what I mean? So, that bit, and so I said to myself that I'm a problem solver. Anything that goes and hits a snack, bring it to me. The lion part arises, we'll sort it out. I realized that it was even more important when I went into my own business. Because there's nobody to solve my problems for me. And so, for me, that is what I would say. Let this begin from inside you. And as a Christian, work towards it. Pray about it. Use the spirit of discernment God gave you, which is spiritual. And use your brains, which God gave you to do the analysis. Physical sort of analysis. You know what I mean? And combine the two. And work towards it incrementally, um, uh, consistently, and with priorities. So that's, that's what I'll say. I don't know if I made sense. Yeah. Yeah. May, may, I please quickly, may I please quickly add that, you see, as you, um, as you climb your career path or pursue your career and identify your, your personal brand and your corporate identity, I'd want to say that don't be rigid. Rigidity took no one anywhere. Don't be rigid. Make room for change. Like, you know, when he gave the example of I'm joining the choir, they are wearing this costume, I'm, I, 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 I stand in this position, how do I do it? How do I join them to wear this costume? Don't be rigid. That's what I'm trying to say. See, make room, make room for, make room, make space for some little change. When you are rigid, you, you, you get stuck. It will shock you. You get stuck. And when you are rigid, it's like you're full of yourself. No, relax. Be flexible. Be flexible and make room so that you can, you can, you can, for lack of a better word, so that you can roll, okay? You can, you can, you can roll in anywhere God has, another op opportunity God has opened for you. Otherwise, when you say that, this is my position, this is where I stand, this is how I want it to be done. No. Make room and stop being rigid. Thank you. Okay. We have one question here. My name is Daniel, and my question is, what are some of the common pitfalls or mistakes we uh, encounter in personal branding, and how can we overcome them? Thank you. Mr. Gideon. All right, so first of all, um, I would like to find out whether we actually understand what it means when we mention brand. <laughs> because it's a word that I think we should use a synonym to, I want to use a synonym to address it at the moment. We are all born as um, humans with no coat or I would say information. And at a point, we grow to pick up a certain shape and form, which most often than not is a reflection of the society or our exposure. Then out of that, we will have an identity, which identity now I would call the brand we are talking about. So it's basically an identity which was secondary to your nature. Nobody was born with whatever brand or whatever identity you are seeing them with, they are all secondary. 
you know, things that came about as a result of the environment we live in. Unfortunately, we are raised differently. And there's this concept we, we, we learn in school called nature, nature, where we are born with one nature and we are nurtured into something else. And that's where we find this brand we are talking about, how we are nurtured. So if there's going to be any mistake, it's going to be born out of how we are nurtured. If there's going to be any pitfall. But unfortunately, where the mistakes start from, they start from a point where you as an individual have no control over. There's this theory we use in trying to do occupational therapies and other forms of therapies. And we borrow it from the Eric Erickson theory of development in terms of psychology. When a child is 18 months, which is a year and six months, I guess, they begin to learn and take certain identity out of which later your brand and everything else you want to call it will come from. You realize that from 18 months to the third year, when such a child is holding something and you want to take it from them, they say no. And that's where they build what we term autonomy. And if parents don't allow them, they will shut them up, beat, start beating them from that age, and they exchange autonomy for shame. And then from the age of three all the way to six, you start building another set of... So if, if you are not fortunate, you don't become an autonomous person. You are not able to you know, project yourself properly. So you exchange it for shame. So even in class, when they ask a question and you can answer, you never put up your hands because something has happened to you that you were so much not aware of from 18 months to three years. And from three years to six years, you begin to pick one of these two. From three years, you begin to start initiating things. Initiative. Your mother is not around, she comes back and then it's like you have cooked. <laughs> you have added something up. So you've done something, nobody asks you to do it. And they beat you for it. If you are fortunate and your parents happen to understand this concept, they don't beat you. They guide you in trying to be somebody who can take initiative. If not, you exchange initiative for what is termed as guilt. So you grow with that too. So now you are coming to build a brand based on this. So if you were not able to build autonomy but shame, that is number one, 18 months to three years. From three years to six years, you are not able to build the sense of initiative but um, guilt. These are the two things you have. Now you have your shame and then you have your guilt. And this is what you are going to build a brand on, an identity on. So there are going to be a lot of pitfalls where you are not able to come out to present yourself for anything in life. And then you begin to look for a certain identity which you are not. You want to fit in to places. You are looking for certain... Because you are not autonomous, you are looking to be a part of something that <laughs> you are actually not supposed to be a part of. You know, pick titles that you do not you know, you don't belong there. So you are not able to, by yourself, build anything. You go along where the current is. That's one of the first mistakes that we do. So people learn how to drink, to smoke, to learn other things and follow, not because they want to, because you don't have the mindset of an autonomous person. You don't have the mindset of initiative. So you have to do self-introspection and find out if something went on wrong in these stages of development, find out if the time comes that you are, you are supposed to make a decision, are you able to do it? That's, I mean, in building your brand. You want to choose a course to go to university to study. Now you are asking everybody. And then at the end of the day, 
everybody's um, suggestion is taken for a decision but yours. There's something you have to do. You never do things because you understand, but you do things, you, do, you, 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 you know, practice or do people's expectation, but you don't do what you are actually supposed to do. You don't build a brand. What you do is you are moving, you are moving along with a certain current, but unfortunately, one day you will grow or you get, to, you get to a certain level of development to realize that you've made a lot of mistakes because you never built a brand, you couldn't take initiatives, and then you were never autonomous. So check these two things. And when you do that, I think you'll be able to build a good brand for yourself. Thank you. I think I like the perspective from the nurturing perspective and the, a lot of the things that people exhibit come from the root. But just to add, that's why we are here in the body of Christ, knowing what God says about you. It doesn't really matter where we have come from. If you know the mind of Christ concerning you, the Bible says, says, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Whatever is in your past should not hold you down and should not define who you are today and would be tomorrow. So we come to Christ. So first things first, identify your weaknesses. Let me call these mistakes within the context of your nurturing, your weaknesses. So if you are beaten down to become a timid person who is not able to express yourself, him or herself, when others are talking, Consider that as a weakness. If you lack the courage, Minister Yao says he prayed for courage. And from that prayer, he has received that courage. So, and I know him. Uh, there are meetings, he will say it as it is, whoever is there. So, that is an identification. I don't have courage. I need courage. God grant me that grace. Some of us were not born with the grace to do public speaking. He talks about, he used to stammer. I used not to also know how to talk before people, even to hold the mic was a big challenge. I had to psychologically make the effort that I can do this. So identifying your gaps or weaknesses, and challenges is one. And deliberately making the effort to undo them, backed by the mind of Christ that you have, that God has concerning you, and by your faith in Christ, you start from there. Now we come to others that we are dealing with practically by you yourself as an individual. Errors that we make in our journey towards realization of our expectations, our goals. You are in school now. The good number of us here in the universities, the number of us are in the secondary schools. There are things that you can't blame anybody for. And those things, if care is not taken, would mar your journey and will always come back to visit you when you least expect them. For instance, you're young today. You find yourself in certain companies that don't do that are not good. Smoking weed, talking vulgar, going to places that you ought not to be going to. Ending up, for instance, let me use the example of tattoos, which projection-wise connotes negativity. Anybody in a corporate space, when you see a young person coming in with tattoos of all manner, physically appearing, even after having clothed yourself, it's going to have a negative impact on you. People are spending fortunes to undo tattoos today. It affects how far you can go. You are young today. Social media is the in thing. You care less what you post out there. You are defining who, how people perceive you. You think that, oh, that happened 20 years ago. It can be the basis for a negative decision with regards to your future. 
So there are things you don't want to contribute. You see, the, the, the word in itself, on its own, is, is nasty. You don't have to add to the baggage that we are carrying as people of God in the world. You don't have to contribute to it. Because without even touching anybody, you are having to give reasons why you should be selected. Don't add to it. There are lifestyles, dress codes, <laughs> per your associations, you, have, you are given to wearing and dressing in certain ways. There are places you cannot enter with the way you dress. And there are simple things you can do to clean yourself up. But some, some will require a lot of effort. Some simple things. Learn to iron your dress. It doesn't have to be expensive. It's not about how expensive the dress is. It's about how neat you manage what you have. It is what you have. Learn to iron it. Before you step out of your house, clean yourself up. Be minded the kind of hairstyles you wear. Don't say somebody made me cut my hair that way. You can't blame anybody for that. It was somebody made me wear that hairstyle. No. It's you. We have to ask, let's speak from the perspective of we Africans. There is a, con there is a major challenge that the school of thought out there, the Africans, we are given to giving excuses. The slightest opportunity is this, this, these people, the colonial master. We have beaten the colonial master for so long. They are not with us, but we are still saying, now we are going back, give us money, the money you took from us. When will we wake up to take responsibility? So take responsibility. If you don't, you will keep blaming others for your pitfalls, for your challenges, and your mishaps. Wake up what you can do from where you sit. If you're a late sleeper, if you are a lazy boy or you lazy girl, it's not your grandfather. He doesn't put you to bed and wake you up. You learn to wake up. If you are not tardy when it comes to timekeeping, it affects your brand. I have a quarter. People, I mean, this I knows. If I have to be somewhere, I, it's a spiritual statement I make. I will be in the space, if it's my own platform, before you come, I'm there. I will define the space spiritually before you come. I don't wait for you to come. And if I have to be somewhere, you make the deliberate effort that I must be there. Some people have lost golden opportunities for one minute lateness. So it's just a minute. Yeah. In your contest, it's just a minute. But that's a billion dollars to somebody. So you take responsibility and then add faith. We don't apply faith without taking responsibility. They go hand in hand. Thank you. Okay. Considering the time, yeah. my last question for this. One minute each, as fast as we can. What has the Christ for done for you in your journey? Looking at how you've carried yourself where you were coming from, where you are now, perspective to where you want to be, not there yet. What price factor that? One minute each. So I'll start from Minister Yaa. Ashidan, sorry, the one minute won't work for me, I beg you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll say this, the story, the, the, the concepts that Uncle Gideon shared and what you shared, I'll tell you two stories. And I think it will resonate with a lot of us. I think when I was in Form 3 or Form 4, our physics teacher was in the class. He asked a question. I knew the answer. I would not say the answer. The guy was angry, ripped all of us. All right? That is how I was. Senior on duty. I was then in upper six. An announcement. I'll hide behind somebody to do the announcement for me. When I wanted to get on radio, right, I told my roommate in the university, he said, about you, the way you talk, Stammer, how can you be on radio? All right. I'm saying this because of what the question is, the Christ factor. 
what the Christ factor has done for me. I was, I was that, I was a worm. You know worm. Not book worm. Worm, proper worm. Um, I think Isaiah 14, 41 or so. It's there. Okay. But the, what the Christ factor did is it made me a new sharp instrument with teeth. I'm sure if I write a book in public speaking, you'll buy, right? Right? God just gave. And I also worked. It, was, I, it also needed the help of one or two people to draw my attention to say that. Ah, do you know you talk well? And I'm like, ah, me? Since when? Because a class that I know the question, I know the answer. I won't answer and they will the whole class. All right? What the Christ factor has done is that it breaks these chains. And it is work. You may pay, let me put it this way. I think you will pay a price if you want to build any of these brands that we have spoken about. You will pay a price for it. And I will end by mentioning about two or three attributes. Because I've already said that whatever brand that you, either intentionally or unintentionally, honestly for me, I haven't been too intentional about some of them, except the one that I said, for me, I'll be a lion and a lamb. That is what I'll go with. So you can't cheat me. I'll also not cheat you. But two things I'll say. Integrity. Even before you sit down and do a proper analysis of yourself to see where your weaknesses are, aim that one of the attributes or brand attributes that you are going to have for yourself is integrity. And I promise you, you'll pay a price for it. But it would put you in a good place. The second is boldness. Not by heart boldness. Boldness in Christ. Okay? That enables you to be able to stand your ground. Stand your ground when the storm is very strong. I believe that even before you look at, um, we've mentioned a lot of things, look into your own life, see where you come from, see the things that are fighting against you. What I've given you is just universal ones which you can top up when you identify your own specific ones which you need to work with. Integrity and boldness. Thank you very much. Okay. Madam Rene. And so the word of God says that um, Christ says be perfect even as your Heavenly Father is like is perfect. That, um, so the Christ factor for me was that when I started... Um, when I figured out what I wanted to do when I started, I realized that I, I did a lot of shoddy work. We are here to share our experiences with you. We are not perfect. We are sharing our pitfalls with you, the, the nasty sides, the, the bad things that happened to us so that we could take one or two cues from them. So when I started, I was very, um, um, you know, maybe maybe you can say lazy. I wasn't I wasn't paying attention to details. My boss would give me something to do. I would deliver anyway, but it didn't have substance. It didn't have substance at all. Cra! I could go on an, on assignment. So I started as a journalist, but later on, I I I had to do strategic NPR. Okay. So when I I went on assignment. I'll come back, I'll do my story. You couldn't, couldn't see the head or tail of the story. It's like, so my boss had to rewrite the story all over again. Ah, Renee, what is this? And, and she tells me, my boss was a female. She'll tell me, you can do this. I expect so much from, and when you saw me at that stage, you, you, you saw potential, but I said, there was no weight. Aquadro womimu. So every time she told me that, I, sometimes I could go back into my cubicle and I, I'll be so sad. And then one day I said, no, sadness won't solve this problem. Sadness won't solve this. And I told God that I want to pursue excellence. So that was where the Christ factor came in now. Eh? When, when a subordinate does a story and I'm reviewing it, oh boy, I would like, I could read through it like how many times? When I'm developing a, like, um, like a campaign strategy, like I would do it to the best and, like, you know, and currently even my survivors so will be like, okay, Renee, this is really good. So see, the Christ factor for me is that I pursued excellence. I told him that I want to be excellent. Um, so the excellence I'm talking about 
um, has no ending. I'm just trying to say that, you know, there are certain standards in our practice, standards and in our practice. So I said, okay, God, I want to meet the standard of my practice as a comms person. And, and, and the Christ factor did it for me. So now I'm meeting the standard. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Japoon. Well, for me, I think basically the Christ factor has done it all for me. I live and do what I do because I know he died for me. And in the end, there's a reward. That's why I do what I do. I remember when I was in secondary school, I followed friends and I nearly lost myself. But at a point when through somebody got sent, I came to understand the reality of what Jesus has done for me. I do all I do because of Christ. So it's done everything for me. Now in my practice, whatever I do, sometimes even in the cases we see, a patient will come to you. I remember not long ago, a patient came around and I was supposed to do a therapy for the patient and it wasn't working. I did all I could. Somebody who has been taking insulin shots for, from the age of around 12. <laughs> Just imagine. She doesn't want to leave again, an international student. And this person would commit suicide if they have the opportunity. And sometimes you do all the things, <laughs> but you are not getting any result. And I don't know what to do. But then I start to talk about Christ. Somebody put a question to you, why, why should I leave this suffering? Do you know what insulin shot is? Do, who, who doesn't know what it is? <laughs> okay. So, they will have to inject themselves. Not a doctor or a nurse giving you an injection. You have to do it yourself every day. From the age of 12. If not, you will die. And Look at, look at that. You inject yourself every day, all the time. You have to be injecting yourself. And this person asks you a question, why should I be living in this pain? And this same person has lost the father and she's from Togo, a very worthy family. And the family has taken over everything. And now she lives in Ghana. Nobody is paying her school fees. And she has to go and find something to do and, and get herself insulin injection and everything and then you've been told to help this person psychologically what do you tell the person she's asking you what do i do why should i leave and sometimes the only why you have for them is you live because of christ and i can talk about christ because i know i have christ so it's done everything for me i came along with one of the um, medical people who has come to do internship in 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 my unit and sometimes when <laughs> i tell them Maybe go out and they don't understand. I say go out because you are here to learn the things we do. But I'm about to talk about something that you have not been brought here to come and learn. Because I've gotten to the end of what I can do. So you won't learn anything. I'm coming to talk about Christ to the person. Because that's what I can say. Don't kill yourself because Jesus has a purpose for you. That's also the Christ factor has given me a life. And that's what is done for me. And I think I'm happy about that. That's beautiful. Thank you. So, for me, the Christ factor is about everything there is to see and know. <laughs> I think in 1999, I officially accepted Christ as Lord. I was born into a Christian family, but, uh, you know. <laughs> but in 1999, I accepted Christ. And from there on, key things Christ has done for me. He helped me define my purpose very early. My first training was in level 100. It was a training on private school management. I was, I was in level 100 reading English and philosophy. And the first set of programs. And I taught very gray-headed participants on how to manage their private schools. And I find I found joy in doing that. And then from then on I knew this was for it. This was it for me. So it made it easy 
to determine why I am on earth. And then from there on also, everything I do in training is defined by Christ. In fact, there are training situations you get into if you're in training. You're training people who are exposed and experienced in a subject matter and a practice, a profession that you have not practiced before, and yet you are standing before them as a trainer. And they are asking you real-life situations, practical questions to help them solve their challenges and make progress. You have no clue. And on your feet, the Lord just speaks to you there and there. As he's speaking, you are, you are facilitating, you are teaching and directing. I've had that experience. I, I have lost count. You walk into, I'm talking about training. We, per my practice, we train, we develop training and facilitate training for any kind of environment. And so, I mean, the current work I do, the project I'm on, was because I developed training for the medical practitioners, doctors for Medical and Dental Council, and I used to travel around running, taking business management concepts to train medical practitioners how to manage facilities, their facilities. The current work I work in, I do, the project, required somebody with a pediatric nursing background at the minimum. A pediatrician at the height. I have none of that. But I run that office. Even what I do here in church, in TBC, I'll share this as a, a testimony, as my life statement. Anytime I handle coordination and I have to run the final announcements, I don't climb the stage, the pulpit with my head. If you, are, you pay close attention, I always will ask the voice of God. I don't come to the, this stage knowing what I'm going to say. I just tell God, Father, they say, me, so you, you've got to talk. I, I don't know what to say. And every single day, the words that come out are never planned. Total dependency. Here's the catch. Anytime you find me here and I'm fumbling, struggling to piece my words together, that is the real Raymond. That is me. And a few occasions, you will see that. You know, that's the, the flesh wants to talk. Anytime I get into my personal person, I lose it. And so by experience, I have learned to totally depend on him. So if I'm coming up, I don't want to hear anybody. I don't want you to tell me, kawe, kawe. I just want to come tabula rasa, empty-headed, just present my mouth. Hey, Lord, use, Lord, talk. <laughs> Let them not hear my voice. And I have that experience every single day. I have learned to utilize that grace, even in corporate training. When I step into corporate environment, irrespective of the faith, when you sit in my training, you would experience God. I've had trainings where I play certain, I set the atmosphere. I have trainings where Muslims, after the training, walk up to me. Can I get your collection of gospel? Right. Non-Christians. Because I want to define the space. You cannot come into that space and do just anything. I will determine the pace. And my God must reign in that space. So Christ for me is everything. You set me aside. You put Christ aside. The person you will meet, you may not like the person. So who am I without Christ? Nobody. That's my statement. Thank you. Sometimes, the only why is Christ. And one more thing, I define this where I have my meetings. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for the full knowledge you have imparted. You may kindly resume your seats. Be better for them.
put right. Hallelujah. Let's put it up for them again once more time. Wow. What a depth of knowledge. Hallelujah. We want to kindly be on our feet. These words that are spoken, the Bible says, whilst they were here speaking in uh, Ezekiel 2.2, it said the spirit of the Lord entered them. Amen. So we want to carry the grace of the words they've spoken over our lives so that we too will be like them and even be better than them. Amen. Are you excited? So lift up your voice. There are three things I want us to pray about. Number one, we want to pray that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. In other words, God should open our eyes to the opportunities that God has given to us to, to stand on and to stand out. Amen. There are so much that God is giving to us and opportunities come every day. So we want to pray that, oh Lord, open the eyes of understanding to our calling, to our giftings, to the place that the Lord has put us to take over the world. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth. Oh Lord, open my eyes that I may behold the things and the opportunities you've given me in life that I will not miss them, that I'll miss, I will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, you want to take the prayer serious in the name of Jesus, even the course you are doing, that oh Lord, it is the right course for me in the name of Jesus, that the eyes of my understanding be enlarged enlightened, that the eyes of my understanding be opened to the things that the Lord has prepared for me, that I will take over the world, that will make me unique, that will make me more preferable, that will make me relevant in my generation. Oh Lord, let the words of your spirit settle upon my life. Let the eyes of my understanding be opened in the precious name of Jesus. I will not miss my calling. Let every crooked part of my destiny be made straight in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, open our eyes to opportunities. Open our eyes to opportunities. Open our minds to the ideas you are dropping in them in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Continue to pray the second prayer. I said come to my, come to me. Come boldly to the throne of grace. You want to pray for boldness to handle the things God is putting in your hand. You want to pray, oh Lord, grant me boldness. Joshua said, be, be courageous, be bold, do not fear, you want to pray, oh Lord, grant me the grace to be bold, to handle everything you put in my heart and in my mind, that Lord, I will not fear to take that step, you've ordered me, Jeremiah said, that God he said, call unto me and I'll show you greater things you do not know, oh Lord, grant us boldness, grant us that courage to run with the ideas and the visions you put in our hearts and our minds in the name of Jesus for we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us in the name of Jesus that vision that fall over your life that the Lord would empower you the Lord will empower you the Lord will grant you courage to take that bold step that you will not miss that assignment God has put in your heart in the precious mighty name of Jesus we give God all the glory finally you want to pray that strengthen to be my Lord and my Savior in that step that I will take, that I will look unto thee. The Bible says, I lift up my eyes unto the hills, for when cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, who made the heavens and the Lord head. Oh Lord, help me. Lord Jesus, be my God in every step I take. Be my Lord in every step I take. Be my God in everything I do. In the mighty name of Jesus, for we can do all through Christ who strengthens us. If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? You want to pray that Lord be my shepherd. The Bible said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Guide us, lead us, direct us, show us the way that we will not miss it. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. In the precious name of Jesus, we want to ask our father, Dr. Romeo, to just embrace us. Thank you for the lives of each and every one.
who is represented here. May your spirit energize us, empower us, and cause us to do exploits in every area we find ourselves. Those in school, bless them with wisdom, with knowledge, and with understanding, and help them to excel in these areas. Those who are working, bless them, Lord, with your favor before men and before you. And those who are also looking up to you in areas that they want you to move, show yourself strong on their behalf. And we pray that we will go out in boldness to show forth who we are before you and before men. But above all, may your name be lifted in the eyes of people that they will see that of a truth, these people are blessed in whatever they do because they have God. May you be seen in everything we do to your glory. And we also thank you, Lord, for all that you have taken us through today. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yesterday was great. Uh, today will be powerful. So let's add that today has been powerful and impactful. And tomorrow will be transformational and glorious. Say tomorrow will be what? I want you to understand that we are on a journey. This is impact. This is standout conference. And our inspiration is taken from Luke chapter 2, the verse 52 where Jesus Christ grew in wisdom, in knowledge, and in the stature or in the love of God. And you know, those four dimensions, we want to meet all of them. So when you see the atmosphere yesterday, it was a bit interactive, the social part and all of that. And today, it has been something that is deposited in us to 
to get us to where we have to belong. And there is that divine connection between Jesus and his maker, God. So spiritual connection. Tomorrow, that is going to be the end firstly. Amen. We are going to have great men of God in the house tomorrow. Say amen. I think I'm a bit, uh, you know, maybe the thing has gotten into me, so I'm down. Hello. Please, are you in the house of the Lord? Are you in the house of the Lord? Put your hands together for Jesus. I, I want to give an assignment. Assignment number one, just go through the scriptures and pick a character in the Bible regarding the branding we've spoken about. I can give you two, or let me give you one. Daniel, just study about the personality. He had branding so that when they were looking for the best, they found him to be the best, and he was 10 times better than the best. And when he did someone to rule. They found him because he branded himself. He branded himself so well, so much so that they didn't even find any fault about him except that of his God. So when they are looking for the best of best, it must be you. And Daniel ruled. In fact, um, let me just add that when you brand yourself very well, it opens doors for you. The people who spoke is the branding that has put them where they are. And Daniel, his branding took him to be a leader. May branding take you to another level. Say amen. May you become the SRC president because you have branded yourself. May you become that student leader because you have branded yourself. May you become the departmental head because of your branding. And when the general manager leaves and they are looking for a replacement, may they not look elsewhere and outside your company. May they call you because you are standing out. Amen. Amen. And tomorrow, two men of God will be in our midst. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. We have a prophet of God with the unction of the Lord. He is going to tell us the mind of God concerning our lives. So we know the next step to take. Hallelujah. And I want to find out how many people are not coming here tomorrow. You are not coming tomorrow. Who is not coming here tomorrow? All hands are down. It means we are all coming tomorrow. Put your hands together for yourselves. We want to see you tomorrow and then we share fellowship. What we are doing here, let me just end on this note. When I say impact, just say this after me. We as impact, we are trying to align ourselves, number one. We are trying to inspire ourselves, which has happened right now. And we are trying to equip ourselves for the work ahead. So when I say impact, say align. Impact. Impact. And then the next one is what? Inspire. Impact. Impact. And the last one is to equip. Impact. So may you be equipped for the good work of the Lord. Amen. Please, we want to recognize uh, the presence of our daddy, uh, Pastor Kata. He comes to take over and gives us the blessings of the Lord. Put your hands together for our daddy. Let's be outstanding. Hold somebody. Let's share the grace. We share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Tell somebody you are outstanding.